Let's pray. Gracious God, we come before you today with such open hearts, happy to be here, hopeful to experience your presence. Please let your spirit move among us through the amazing uh, world of the internet and here in person. Uh, so we may hear today what you have to speak with us. We pray all this in the sweet name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. the waters of our baptism God calls us to worship I want to welcome you to worship this morning here at New Covenant Fellowship of Austin 
your presence blesses each of us. It blesses this church. And we pray that during your time with us, you will receive a blessing from the worship service. This morning, I want to welcome Denise Pierce as the preacher. She is a, a longtime attorney here in Austin, Texas. She has three children, one of whom she put on a plane this morning to return to Georgia. And as she told me, her heart is on that plane. And so we pray your daughter's travel safety and a very good semester this year. Denise is also a longtime friend of New Covenant Fellowship of Austin. And she graduated from Austin Presbyterian Theological Seminary with a Master's of Arts in Theology. She's currently serving on the board of APTS. So we welcome you this morning and thank you for being with us. And we thank Kevin Cross for being our liturgist. Now I'd like to invite Kevin to come and begin the worship service. Thirsty, we come to worship. Let us gather around the watering place where streams of living water run and welcome the foreigner, the outsider, the guest to this place of love. Let us welcome each other as we gather and lift our voices in praise. Join me as we pray together. Holy living water, we gather and we chatter. We gather and we share. We gather and we drink together. Today, as we gather, we are amazed that you thirsted just as we thirst. You needed companions just as we need companions. Help us not to be amazed at these simple things, water and words. For water and words are what brought holiness to life. Living, living water, water, living word. We are awed by water and word. And yet, even as we are awed, we also find we need to, to seek forgiveness and wholeness, for we take them for granted. Forgive us when we are careless with our words. Forgive us when we squander the water. Forgive us when we forget that it was through God's unlimited love that the word joined us and the water brought us life. Forgive us for forgetting that it is through the water and the word that we had everything good. Living water. I'm sorry. Let us now welcome each other with uh, peace of Christ. Also, peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ, Pastor Cristo. Hey, Kali. Hey, Hey, peace of Christ. Hey. Peace of Christ. Thank you. Good to see you, Kevin. Good to see you. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Danita. Kali. Hey. Hey, Kathy. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ, Roxanne. Peace Oh, you Robert, peace. <laughs> Kathy, you're <laughs> doing it. I'm going to love you, Kathy. There you go. Peace of Christ, Your Kathy. Your brother traveled here, right? Yes. Peace, peace of Christ, Kathy. No, we did. We went to Georgia. Oh, yeah. I'm calling you. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was uh, Funny thing, you call my name by my heart. Yeah. Because I don't know how to do it. Yeah, yeah. your name's on there. It says Kathy. Oh, OK. Thank you. Yeah, we miss your smiling face, but we know it's a good one. It's all right. I'm in my position. 
Yeah, exactly. We did a triangle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's it, so, Well, yeah, it was exhausting. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, between the, it was cold both places in Canada. I mean, it wasn't as bad as it usually is. Right. But uh, the girls had a good time. They went some morning. So. Yes. Okay. And y'all had on the plane. Yeah. 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 We, I think we got lucky because the, oh my gosh. the storm, the storm oh, yeah. decided yeah. that we had to travel. Yeah. And so it yeah. was sunny. It was, yeah. but it was cold. But yeah, we didn't have any delays. We didn't take Southwest, fortunately. I feel for those people. Robert, yeah. Robert, yeah. Robert yeah. wants to say hello to us. Yeah. Yeah. Some people didn't even make it home. Yeah. It was a lot. It was bad. Robert, yes, Robert. Yes, saying hello. Yes. Piece of crap. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking. You can't see who I'm talking to. I was talking to Lisa. I wasn't ignoring you, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I want to just say hi, everybody. Hi, hi, hi Tisa. Hi, hi, Thank you for being here. Oh, I'm sorry for well, you know, you know, you know, well, I mean, we yeah, see yeah, each yeah, other. No, it is kind of nice. No. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, everyone. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Robert, this is mm -hmm. Megan. I'm the individual. They joined me last week. Ah, good guys. Yes. Wish we had a recording from Frank and John. If you like, you can sing. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. When my life and At this time, I would like to invite to the podium the previously mentioned Ms. 
and these scripture will be bringing our scripture. Good morning, friends. It's my delight to be here with you and to invite you into a word of prayer with me. Let us pray. Gracious God in heaven, we are so thankful that you, you call us friends. We are also thankful that your faithfulness, Lord, is never ending. Your constant mercy and grace toward each one of us is here. We gather now in the name of your son, Jesus. We gather now with love and adoration one for another because our hearts are just bursting with love because you, God, are there. We ask now that you would just illuminate our hearts and minds as we hear your word and your truth. It's in the Son, your Son, that, whose name that we pray today. And we all sit together. Amen. Amen. I want to read from the word of the Lord in the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Here's the word of the Lord. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized you, do you, by you. Do you come to me? Verse 15, but Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, he being John. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up out of the water, suddenly the heavens were open to him, and he saw God's spirit descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from the heavens said, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So with this passage in mind from today's scripture, I want to speak from the subject, remember your baptism. We just talked about Jesus' baptism. Our passage tells us that Jesus comes from Galilee to John at the Jordan River. John is already there baptizing folks who are repenting of their sins. And here comes Jesus. Jesus, now we understand, is about 33 years old, we think, 30 years old, perhaps. He has lived from the time we saw him last week, from this infant baby born into, maybe two weeks ago now for Christmas, <laughs> infant baby born into the world, the Son of God, and he has been reared by his parents. He has been fussed at for going to the temple and not telling anyone he was there. He has been amazing, the, the scribes and Sadducees of what he knows about the word. But before this moment, he has been told by his heavenly father that it wasn't yet his time. It wasn't yet his place. But here in our scripture today, we find Jesus after those 30 years of daily ordinariness walking into himself as the Messiah, as the promised Son of God. And the first thing that he does to mark his earthly journey is to go to the River Jordan to be baptized. And remember, like Jesus, each one of us has done that thing. Either our parents brought us to be baptized as infants, or we ourselves, believing in Jesus as the Son of God, elected that we would be baptized. And what was the point? Whether we were infants or believers, young or old, our point was to say like Jesus did in this passage, that on this day, I am declaring in public view my belief and my faith and my discernment in a true and living God, and I am determining to surrender my life to this belief, to this faith, to this way, to this love. And so whether we did it as infants and we just have pictures and certificates, 
or whether we made a conscious choice as a believer to be baptized, the water in this font in front of us and the word that we just read reminds us that Jesus followed in the same way, or that we, in other words, are following in the same way of Jesus by presenting our bodies to be baptized. And both are beautiful. Infant baptism or a believer's baptism, both are affirmed in the scriptures and both point and affirm to our beliefs, our family's beliefs and the absolute person work of our Jesus Christ. So my first point today is that just like Jesus, we asked to be baptized. We asked a John or a Judy to mark us with the water of the living and true God. Not only did we ask for it, but when it happens, just like Jesus, we are empowered by our baptism. Let me remind you of what verse 16 said. It says, when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened and he saw God's spirit descending like a dove and alighting on him. I see our passage, our author of the scripture, making the point that at the very end of Jesus' baptismal rite, the heavens were open to him. And Jesus saw the spirit descending like a dove and alighting on him. What's the author's point? That at our baptism, the heavens see and the heavens rejoice in our commitment, our demonstration of our faith and our love and our joining into the family of God. It says that in the book of Acts, the, the scripture goes on to teach us that when we are baptized, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in the same way that Jesus did. That God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit that day and in doing so empowered him. And when Jesus came up out of that water and started his ministry, he went on with the Holy Spirit's power to heal and to um, release the oppressed and to teach with more power and to liberate women in their society. And so you and I, having been empowered by the Holy Spirit at our baptism, are now empowered to do those great works, to heal people with our words and love, to liberate captives with how we move and shape our, our lives around theirs. We have a Holy Spirit that's empowering us to do that work, and that Holy Spirit is giving us comfort and counsel. He's advocating for us. The Holy Spirit in her person is interceding for us, guiding us, sealing us, indwelling in our very lives by virtue of our baptism. And every day, the indwelling Holy Spirit that we got at baptism is empowering us with love, and joy, and peace, patience, kindness, all the fruits of the Spirit, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and oh yes, self-control. Not only did we assent to our baptism and therefore be empowered in the moment, finally I see in this passage that we are so very much beloved. Verse, uh, the last verse in our pericope, I think verse 16 says, and a voice from the heavens said, this is my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. And just like the father in heaven was well pleased with Jesus, the Father is well pleased with you and I. We are fearfully and wonderfully made by him. He knows every hair on our heads. She knows the plan she has to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future. God loves us, protects us, corrects and even guides us in the person of our heavenly parent. And for all of those reasons, we have to remember our baptism. Remember who we are and remember whose we are. And we remember that in the everydayness of life. 
in every conversation, every task, every relationship, each encounter, each transaction, every meal, in the lying down and getting up, we remember who we are and whose we are. We remember that we are beloved, that we are empowered, and that we are chosen and elect for the purpose of shining out and setting forth God's light on this earth. A few weeks ago, right before, I guess Thanksgiving, my husband and I were in Houston visiting my brother for the holiday. We had to make one more run to the grocery store, like that Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Who wants to go to H-E-B on the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving? Nobody. But we had to go because we needed a couple of things. And we decided to divide and conquer. My job was to get the tomatoes and the cucumbers that we needed. And my husband, Daryl's job was to get, I think, a jalapeno pepper, rice, and orange juice. So we go into the store, we divide to our spaces, and our, 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 our objective is to meet at the checkout, the self-checkout, in like three minutes so we can get out of here. <laughs> I handle my task. I have my tomatoes, I have my cucumbers, and I am at the checkout ready to go. And I'm feeling pretty good about myself because <laughs> normally I'm the one that he's waiting on. But I'm there, I'm ready, we're, and Daryl does a show. I'm watching people come in and out of the HEB, getting their stuff, come in, check, like literally come in, get their stuff, check out. And I'm still standing in my spot waiting on him to come. People think I'm weird. It's like, who's standing <laughs> at the end of the aisle with their cucumbers and tomatoes? Like, lady, we do some more shopping or check out. Like, you got to figure this thing out. And as I'm waiting in just my everydayness, I'm getting really frustrated with my husband. Because how long does it take to get a jalapeno pepper, rice, and orange juice? And I'm trying to decide how my baptism is going to show itself in this moment. When he comes out of the aisle, is he going to get the, where the heck have you been, Denise? Or is he going to get the, hey, babe, all right, let's go. I did talk myself out of using my cell phone to call him. That was good. <laughs> and I, um, when he finally emerged, I think I had somewhat of a pleasant look. On <laughs> but he came out of the aisle so excited, I couldn't help but, you know, <laughs> respond with some cheer. He is beaming. What was so exciting about getting these three things? He says to me, I just made the latest day on the, on the rock side. What did, what did you do? What was so amazing? He said, she told me that I just completely made her curse. Here's the story. He's looking for rice. Apparently, there are lots of people that need rice on the night before Thanksgiving. And apparently, he's close enough to this woman in their pursuit of this rice that he she smells his cologne. And she says to him, wow, you know, I really like your cologne. What is that you're wearing? He, tell, he, he tells her what it is, and she's like, you know what? That was so perfect because I've been looking for gifts for blah, blah, blah. Now I know exactly what to get. And she <laughs> is being. And, of course, he, having been flattered in the right side, <laughs> um, is also being. And had he not stopped to be kind, to be generous, to be fun-loving, and the stress of all of that Wednesday night Thanksgiving that encounter in the grocery store couldn't have happened. And I just, I submit that story to all of us today to remind us that every email, every phone encounter, even with the most frustrating customer service people that we might, you know, deal with, every trip to the doctor, to school, to church, to our club, the stuff that fills up the things to do list in our days. All of it has to be cloaked and baked with our remembrance of our past, of whose we are and who we are and why we exist. Not just to get the thing done, but to spread the love of God to the people that are around us. Amen. And so this is why remembering our baptism works because it causes us to feel loved, to feel loved, to feel and accept the 
specialness that God has for us, the uniqueness that God created us in, uh, to feel just how Jesus must have felt when the sky opened up for him at the end of his baptism. God feels the same way about each one of us in remembering our own um, baptism, our own finite clenching uh, to our relationship with God is going to cause us all to feel loved, to feel safe, to feel known by an everlasting, supernatural, and amazing God. And not only that, when we remember whose we are, it's going to call us to accountability. It's going to cause us to want to reconcile with our enemies, even those that we love dearly. And it's going to cause us to see the world differently, to see the world as God sees them. And this is why the body of Christ works. This is why New Covenant Fellowship works, why it extends itself why people keep coming back. It's because each one of us remembers our baptism. We are a full body of baptized believers. So when we all remember that together, then we essentially walk out what the scripture says, that we are one body, one spirit. Just as we were called to one hope, to the calling, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in all. And for that reason, my friends, why we remember our baptism today and every day. Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to thank, thank you, Ms. Denise, for allowing God to, to use you to remind us not only to, but uh, also how to remember our baptism. Uh, friends, at this time, we want to get ready to uh, enjoy a recording uh, called Here I Am, Lord. We have that recording ready. Yes, it's coming. Thank you. Thank you. 
congregational meeting uh, today that we were told about last week and, and so at this time Ms. Linda will, will come forward to, to facilitate that. I'd like to invite Lucy to come also. Thank you Danita for that wonderful message this morning for reminding us that we are called to remember who we are that we are God's beloved. I love the way you said the people of the Muslim Covenant Fellowship of Austin are clearly God's beloved, called to a particular task, a particular way of being in the world. And as New Covenant Fellowship of Austin, the part of their responsibilities of the people is to elect elders to serve each year uh, on what is the session, the governing body of the church. So I want to invite Lucy to come forward. We have the, we have elected a elder nominated committee, and that committee has done its work. And Lucy is here to report that to you. Yes, uh, thank you, Linda. Today we present the following slate of officers for a congregational vote: um, Elder Robert Booth, um, myself. Lucy Oglesby and Elder Danita Nelson. Are there any nominations from the floor? You can self nominate if you're a member of the church. Seeing none, are you ready to vote? All right. Those in favor? Yes, please. Can, can the other? Um, You're all right. Okay. And then, and Danita. Danita's online. Oh, she was here last week. I meant you met her. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Are you ready to vote? Those in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed. So you have been elected. Uh, this is part of the congregational meeting. And now we're closing the congregational meeting and moving into the installation of the new elders. So um, I want to invite Robert and Lucy to come forward. And Danita, you're there online still, I hope. Bonnie, could you spotlight her too? Here. I'm here. Okay, yeah. all right. Okay. Hey, Bonnie, could you also spotlight Danita? Oh, wait, maybe it's me. <laughs> maybe I need to change. Uh oh, no hiding. <laughs> Here, we'll do there it that way. Is. Okay. <laughs> hey, Danita. This is Robert, and this is Lucy, and Danita's there. The local churches of the Presbyterian Church of the United States of America are governed by the session which is composed of ruling elders elected by the members of the church and the pastor or pastors who are called by the congregation. I'll just say that elders are elected, but pastors are called by the congregation. 
together ruling elders and pastors who are also called teaching elders. So you can have ruling elders and teaching elders. You do have those in a congregation. Seek to foster the spiritual development of the people entrusted to their care and administer the church's business. According to scripture, those who serve as ruling elders should be blameless in life, sound in the faith, wise in the things of God, and discreet in all things. It is the first duty of the ruling elders to seek to represent the mind of Christ. I like to say we are called to grow into the mind of Christ. As the law of love places certain duties upon each Christian, Ruling elders are especially bound to fulfill those duties and to be an example to all. Danita, Robert, and Lucy, having been elected to this high office, you are now asked to answer the following question. And there are several of them. I love the way uh, uh, Nikki said to me in an email this week, those are constitutional questions. <laughs> <laughs> First question. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you? We do. I do. I do. Thank you. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? They can also be called the Hebrew Testament. I do accept those scriptures to be by the Holy Spirit the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you. Do you? I do. I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of the church authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do and will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God do you and will you I do and I will with God's help I will will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions. Will you? I will. Anita? With God's help, I will. Will you be governed by the church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? I will. I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? I will. I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? Do I do. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? I will. I will, with God's help. Will you be a faithful elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in the church's government and discipline? serving in councils of the church, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? I will. I will. I will. I'd like to invite Nikki now to come and put some questions to you, the members of the church. So, do we, the members of the church, accept Robert Lucy and Danita as ruling elders chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ. Do we? We do. We do. We do. Do we agree to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, 
and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church. Do we? We do. We do. We do. We do. This has been an especially difficult year. This past year has been an especially challenging year for the church. And for you to come to this point, to reach this point where you can elect three persons, three people, to be elders of the church is a beautiful thing. It is a grand thing. It is a glorious thing. It is something that God has given you as a gift, and I hope that each of you will receive it as a gift, trusting it, cherishing it, using it so that God can be glorified in this time, this place. I'd like to invite all who are have been ordained as elders or pastors to come forward as they can. Lucy and Robert and Danita, we are wrapping our arm around you also. Yes. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have gifted your servants throughout. There are a variety of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is, is accomplished. To each is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together, we are the body of Christ and individually members of the church. All that we have is the Lord's. Let us give generously for the well-being of the world. You are invited to send your offerings in in the mail to our church, or you may donate online through our website. Those who are gathered at Wilshire, at Wilshire are invited to come up to touch the basket as a sign of your dedication to God. Now, let us sing together the, the doxology as we dedicate our offerings. Praise God, God for mercy. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from north and south and east and west to sit at table in the kingdom. Our Lord invites all who trust in him and even those who want to trust in him to come to this feast he has prepared. Let us pray. <coughs> Voice of heaven, before you breathe the word that tamed chaos, you named us your children, heirs of all the goodness you desired for us. You sang to us in Eden's garden, inviting us to glorify you forever. Yet we walked into the world's shadows, leaving the songs behind us. Still you persisted in your hopes for us, knowing that without hope, life is barren and desolate you sent the prophets to adorn us with grace but we ignored them 
finally, in the fullness of time, you sent your most precious possession, Jesus Christ, your beloved Son. Holy are you, mighty God, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Seeing our sorrow, he stepped into the Jordan that we might know and believe we are beloved. He lived among us, teaching us new songs of joy and praise. Realizing our ears were filled with the world's lies, he spoke the truth of your everlasting hope for us. When we were about to die, he came running to us to defeat sin and death and mark us as your own. Holy Spirit, fill us with the bread of forgiveness and the cup of hope. Flow through us like baptismal waters so we might become a river of reconciliation. Grant us your peace so we might carry this gift to the world. Set our hope on Christ so we might build such hope in our neighbors and communities. And when the river of time stops flowing, when we gather as one around your table, we will join our voices as your children singing to you, God in community, holy in one. Amen. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread. And after blessing it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And in the same manner he took, he took the cup saying, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you. Whenever you drink this cup, do so in remembrance of, you, of me. And each time we eat the bread, eat the bread and drink the cup, we are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes again. The feast is prepared. All is ready. I invite you to come to this feast that God offers you. Come. We'd like to come up and hold the bread. Who would like to hold the cup? Nikki. Interesting. Come, to you. come. North and south. <laughs> <laughs>
we have on this table so many important elements of the Christian church. We have the Christ candle, the light of the world. We have the baptismal waters that we go through first when we're born, and then the baptismal waters we go through when God declares God's love for us and bestows his spirit. <clears throat> And then we have the bread and the cup. They are symbols of God's love and acted in the world through Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. They call us to remember who we are and whose we are. So let us remember as we pray. God of eternity, having feasted on the bread and drunk the cup, Send us out as servants of salvation to those longing for new life so that when the time comes and we are all gathered in heaven, we will join hands and dance around your table, singing our praises to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.